we're going to look at Affinity Photo's astrophotography stacking feature and how we can use it to stack broadband deep sky data using luminance, red, green and blue filters, then composite them together into a full color image. We will be using monochrome FIT files for this example, and we will be doing the entire workflow in 32-bit unbounded linear color space. No conversion to 16-bit is required to make use of Affinity Photo's adjustments, filters, and tools, which saves time and allows us to stay non-destructive in our editing. To begin with, let's go to File and New Astrophotography Stack, and we're taken into the dedicated persona or workspace for stacking. On the right-hand studio here, we have the Files panel, and this is where we will add our light frames and also our calibration frames. Now, this doesn't apply to our current workflow, but file groups allow you to stack files from multiple imaging sessions where your dark and flat frames might be different. You simply add additional file groups here and then toggle between them. So I'll just get rid of my second file group for now. Let's go ahead and add our light frames. So we can click Add Files down here, navigate to where my light frames are, and then we're going to add our first set of light frames, which will be the luminance data. Now to save time, rather than double clicking into the folder and then having to shift click and select all of my files, instead, I can come out to the folder above that, simply select the folder that contains all the files, then click open. Now, when you add the light frames, you can view tone stretched versions by clicking through them. And you can also exclude or reject single frames from the stack. For example, in this frame, all of these stars are out of focus. So we might reject this by simply disabling the eye icon to the right here. Then just moving down, we also have another frame with no meaningful data. So we can reject that as well. Then just continue clicking through our frames. There we go, there's another frame where the stars are out of focus. So let's reject that until we are happy with the set of frames that we want to carry forward and stack. Now we can move on and add our calibration frames. So I will switch across to bias frames here. Use the add files dialog. And I have all of my bias frames in two different folders. So for this example, we are using two by two pixel binning for the color data and one by one pixel binning for the luminance data. And of course, this means that we need to select the correct set of calibration frames. So for luminance, that's the bin one by one folder here. So we can just select that and click open. Then do the same for the dark frames. So add files, go out to my darks folder here, select the bin one by one folder, click open. And finally, the flat frames. So in the flats folder, I have my luminance bin one by one subfolder here, and I can just open that. Now, once we've added all of these calibration frames, we could immediately try and stack everything together using this option on the context toolbar. But if we move over to the light frames, you may notice that we have quite a few column defects with this particular camera. We can identify these for remapping using the bad pixel map tool which I will select now. Now, if you haven't already done an initial stack, this will quickly analyze your dark and flat calibration frames for hot and cold pixels respectively. So if we zoom in, we can see that bad pixels are highlighted in red. Now we can manually identify bad pixels and column defects by single clicking on them within the document view. But to make our life easier, let's first reduce the hot pixel threshold. I'm actually going to bring this all the way down to 0.1, which seems excessive, but with this particular camera, using the minimum value is necessary to capture most of the inconsistent bad pixels and the column defects. To help visualize this, I can switch over to dark frames, then uncheck show bad pixels on the context toolbar, and you can actually see how noisy the dark frames are. When we enable show bad pixels again, we can now see it is accurately identifying all of these problematic pixels, including the column defects. It looks like we don't need to do any manual work here. So let's click stack. 
and Affinity Photo will calibrate, align, and then stack our frames. Okay, we now have our nice, clean, stacked result. We can click Apply to move back to the Photo Persona, and on the Layers panel here, we can see our stacked image as a pixel layer with a gamma adjustment and an additional curves adjustment for tone stretching. We will rename this layer to Luminance to stay organized. And now we have to repeat this process for our red, green, and blue data. So let's go to File, New Astrophotography Stack, move the type back to Light Frames, choose Add Files, then we're going to use the red data. So remember what I said earlier, the red data is two by two pixel binned, which means when we go to add our calibration frames, such as the bias frames, we need to use the correct bin two by two set of frames. And I'll just do the same for the dark frames. And then the flat frames. And as before, I'm going to select the bad pixel map tool. The threshold adjustment I made last time has been remembered, and this is sufficient to identify all of the inconsistent bad pixels and the column defects. So I will click stack, then click apply, and rename this pixel layer to red. Once again, let's go in and do the same for the green data. Then click Stack and Apply. Then rename the pixel layer to green. And finally, we have the blue data. Okay, just rename this to blue. And now we have our three sets of color data, as well as our luminance data. We just need to get them into the same document. So we're going to use the luminance document as a base. Then I will go to my red document, select the red pixel layer and copy. So Command C on Mac, Control C on Windows. Then paste into the luminance document and just above the luminance pixel layer using Command V on Mac, Control V on Windows. Do the same for green and the same for blue. Now you may notice that we have an obvious scaling mismatch as the color data is only a quarter of the resolution compared to the luminance data. The star alignment can take care of this, however, and will non-destructively scale the layers up. All we need to do is select all four layers, making sure we select luminance first as our base layer for alignment. So I will hold shift and click to select all four layers, then go to arrange and align layers by stars. And there we go, everything is scaled and aligned for us. Now let's select just the color data layers and set the blend mode to add. We now need to map each monochrome pixel layer to a specific color. To achieve this, we will use a recolor adjustment layer. By default, this recolors to red, so we will clip it into the red pixel layer by click dragging the adjustment and offering it to the text here. Just keep the cursor to the right and then release the mouse button. Rather than going to the layer menu every time to add a new adjustment, it is quicker to duplicate this existing adjustment using Command J on Mac or Control J on Windows, and then drag it into the next layer. So that's green. And for this, we will change the hue to 120 degrees. Duplicate once more, drag it into the blue pixel layer, change the hue to 240 degrees. Now what I will do is click drag the luminance layer and bring it above the color data layers, then set its blend mode 
to luminosity. Now, if we just zoom in, one of the drawbacks of this approach, whereby we use data as a luminosity layer, is that you might get these colored hard edges around star detail. We can reduce this by going to the blend ranges dialog here, and then just dragging down on both right hand nodes for source layer ranges and underlying composition ranges. So this now gives us the benefit of using the luminance layer for spatial resolution, but without having hard colored edges around the stars. Now, so far, the colors of the galaxy look correct, but we have a really strong red background. Let's take care of that now. We will move to the top of the layer stack, then go to layer and merge visible. This creates a merged pixel layer of our layer stack so far. So we'll just rename this to merged. Then we want to go to filters, astrophotography, and remove background. So now on our document view, you can see a sampler node, which we can click drag around. I'm going to position this over an area of the background, then check sample color at handle. If I just move this dialog, we have a very faint gradient creeping in via the bottom right corner here. So I can single click to add an additional sampler down here. Now at the moment, this is subtracting the background to pure black, which is not very visually appealing. So we can raise the output black level here until we find a result that works better for this image. Let's try somewhere around here then click apply. Now before going any further, let's crop our composition to get rid of the colored edges. We can do this using the crop tool, which we can find on the tools panel here, or alternatively, C on the keyboard. We'll select that tool, then we can just drag these crop handles in slightly, and use return on the keyboard to commit the crop. Now it's time to do some tone and color work. So still at the top of the layer stack, I will add another curves adjustment. The shortcut for this is Command M on Mac, Control M on Windows. Now on the curves dialog, I can use the picker option here by clicking on the button. And this will allow me to click drag on the background here to sample and add a node to my curves graph. Then I can pick off a faint area of the galaxy detail here and really bring that out by dragging up. This will further separate the tones between the background and our deep sky object detail, but we might just want to click drag and add an additional node for a slope on the graph. And this will just help us to avoid overexposing that core detail as you can see here. So let's just have a nice slope like this and then I will close the curves dialog down. Now looking at this, I might actually repeat the curves process. Using my shortcut again, I will add another curves adjustment, get the picker, just sample off the background, then some of that faint galaxy detail. It's okay to use multiple curves adjustments stacked on top of one another until you really bring out those tones you are looking for. I feel here I've perhaps darkened the background slightly too much, so I will click, select that node, and just manipulate it slightly. Okay, so the next step might be to add a straightforward brightness and contrast adjustment layer. And with this, I might just raise the brightness slightly and perhaps just increase the contrast. It's starting to affect the core too much here though. So I can select the paintbrush tool, increase my brush width, bring the hardness down to 0% for a nice soft edge to brush. Then across on the color panel, just ensure my active color is set to black and just paint into the core detail here. And if I just show you a before and after, you can see that it just allows me to raise the tones around the core without really affecting the brightness of the core itself. Okay, the next step we take 
might be to reduce the intensity of the star detail. So to do this, we want to select the merged pixel layer because we're going to use the pixel data to create a selection. So we want to use select and select sampled color, then zoom in, find a relatively bright star, change the model here to intensity, single click on the star and raise the tolerance value like so. For this example, I've gone to 100%, but just choose a value that allows you to make a selection of most of the bright star detail in the image. I'll click apply, then we need to grow the selection. So we can go to select and grow, check circular, then try a small radius of perhaps two pixels. That might want to be slightly larger. Perhaps I might even try four pixels. Click apply. Then I'm going to add an HSL adjustment layer. Like with curves, I can use a shortcut for this. So Command U on Mac, Control U on Windows. Then to get rid of the selection, I can use Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows. And on this dialog now, I can just reduce the luminosity shift slider ever so slightly. It's easier to see the overall effect if we just fit to screen using Command-0 on Mac, Control-0 on Windows. And now we can just see the overall effect that this is having. Just be careful with this technique, because if we zoom in, we'll start to see that we've got black halos around some of the star detail. So I'll just move my slider to compensate for that. OK, now we have come to the best part, which is color manipulation. At the top of the layer stack, I will add a selective color adjustment. Then to see this in more detail, I'm just going to zoom into the core here. OK, now switching across to yellows for our color target, let's bring cyan down to minus 100% and yellow up to 100%. And we will take a similar approach to the reds. So cyan down to minus 100% and perhaps bring the magenta up and the yellow up. And this ends up giving the galaxy detail a lovely red orange glow. Here's the before and the after. Okay, I'll close that dialog down and I might do a final crop just to tighten up the composition here. So C for the crop tool and let's just crop away all that excess detail to have a nice focused composition of the Andromeda galaxy. Do bear in mind that cropping is non-destructive. So for example, if we wanted to include a bit more of the star detail, we could use C again to select the crop tool, then check reveal on the context toolbar, and it will reveal all of that information that we previously cropped away, meaning we can just expand our crop slightly then use return to commit that new crop. And I think I will leave it there for now, but I would encourage you to experiment further. There are other astrophotography video tutorials as I use various different techniques and features in each one, depending on the image being edited. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.